Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. In today's video, you can see behind me, we've got this lovely Volvo V90. We're gonna be doing a mega review today. We'll be showing you all the interior, exterior. We can take it on a drive through a town, dual carriageway, blast it down a road, and really give you a full sense of what this car is like to live with. It'll be like if you're actually here. So um, yeah, let's get straight into it. So it's a V90. And it's the B5, so it's the diesel mild hybrid. Um, now, I looked on Austin Auto Trade this morning, and there was only six of these for sale in the country, so they're pretty rare beasts indeed. Finished in Silver Dawn, and as you can see, it's absolutely lovely. So I've been really looking forward to getting my hands on a V90, sort of a full-size Volvo, the S90 V90. So obviously, I drive my S80, and I just really wanted to get a comparison between the two. Um, obviously the V60 is a very capable car, but with a longer wheelbase, you get slightly more comfort, and slightly more space as well. So um, let's come and have a look and see what we've got. So this is a 2023 model year V90, finished in Silver Dawn, like I said. Now we've got 19 inch alloy wheels wrapped in 25540 tires. Michelin Primacy 4s are standard on these cars and these alloys really do match the paintwork nicely with the black mirrors, the black grille, etc. You'll notice that this doesn't have the chrome like sort of the, the luxury inscription models used to have. This is almost more sporty R design style model. So um We've also got the blacked out window trim around. Now, immediately at the front, you've got the Thor's Hammer headlights, which is now a nice little feature on every single Volvo. Quite an aggressive front splitter down here. Fog lights in there, LED fog lights, of course, and the parking sensors integrated into the front bumper as well. We've got our lovely big Volvo badge in the front. This is also acts as the radar for the adaptive cruise control and the front camera is there as well which is always a nice addition and you can see the front of this car is just really nice and imposing it just looks like a bigger more grown-up version of the v60 that we tested before on the channel now from this angle you can really see there's a lovely shape to this car um big sort of strong lines down the side here there's a nice crease that runs from this front wing all the way through to the back of the car which makes it nice got blacked out Roof rails here, obviously got the shark fin antenna. It's all keyless as well, so you just open the door and you can shut it by putting your thumb on the handle. And as a silhouette, it just doesn't get better than that, does it? Um, like I said, the V90 is sort of the big daddy of Volvo estate cars. It is the pre or the successor to the, the V70 as well. Around the back, you can see we don't have any exhaust on display, but we do have a nice sort of sporty splitter. We think we've got some fake vents here, though, which is a, a little bit annoying, but you've got the sensors and everything nicely integrated into the rear bumper and the gorgeous rear lights here with the dynamic LEDs. Real quick. We should be able to, in theory, open the door with the foot. And as you can see, it's works. Now, I don't normally get those to work, so that's always a bonus. Um, and as you can see, you're met with an absolutely cavernous boot here. Um, you could easily fit, well, you, I don't think there's anything you couldn't fit that shouldn't be in a car anyway. So um, you can see nice big flat load floor here, nothing to get in your way. You've got a boot divider there with these bands for shopping bags. Underneath there, you then have more storage under the boot as well. So it's absolutely cavernous, like I said. Got our first aid kit here, a 12 volt socket, nice LED lighting on either side as well. A few sort of hook points for bags and some lovely chrome finish tie down points, which are very hefty indeed. Now, unfortunately, we can't um, release the seats from the back here. We've got no handles available. We've got to go round to the front of the car to do that. So let's do that now. Show you guys just how big this boot is. Because that really is why you're buying a V90. So as you can see, the headrest electrically sort of move. Will this allow us? Oh, no, we've got to go around the other side. But you can already see, you can easily sleep in this thing. Um, it is absolutely vast. Let's come round and just fully release it. 
yeah, here you go. You've now got, well, you can fit any sort of chest of drawers, wardrobe, depending what, who in your family might want to buy some giant piece of furniture off of um, Facebook Marketplace. You'll definitely be able to get it in here. So um, if you're that way inclined, the V90 is for you. There's miles more room than a V60. Um, probably at least another foot or two in length. Um, we'll put these seats back up and give you a tour of the back shortly. But um, yeah, you can just see how big the boot of this car is. And also obviously the parcel shelf is completely removable and stores under the floor of the boot as well, which is a nice feature. Let's hop in front, give you a quick sort of tour of the driver's cockpit. We'll do it all in the right order and move to the back shortly. So as soon as you open the door, you've got a nice solid Volvo door handle and you're met with this lovely aluminium trim here. We've got the Harman Kardon speakers, uh, which are fantastic. Memory buttons as well, a nice milled aluminium door handle, lock and unlock, and our window controls here, which have got sort of a matte finish and a shiny finish. Quite nice, actually. Um, not plasticky, although it does look slightly plasticky. It doesn't feel it. Volvo tread plate there. And as we hop in, you'll see we've got these lovely sculpted leather seats. Now, this one is fully electrically adjustable. Passenger side isn't. That's an extra. It's an optional extra. Um, but you can see here, yeah, it's just a really lovely place to be. It's typical modern Volvo CMA platform. So we've got our portrait screen here. Everything's nicely adorned with aluminium trim. Everything's got a nice click and heft to it, which is nice. We don't have the crystal shifter in this car like we did in the XC70, but I think we can forgive it for that. And moving down, then we've got a wireless charging pad here. We've got our, obviously our gear shifter start stop button just the twist of that parking brake automatic start stop disable two cup holders of wireless charging we can pull this across if we want to hide that which is quite nice there's also another little hidden cubby there uh, with a 12 volt lighter in it um and just yeah really tidies the place up when you put those covers across which is nice got a nice sort of minimalist bar of buttons down here we've got our volume button we've got track skip which is just nice to see nowadays not many cars have that we've also got manual buttons for the rear defrost and windscreen clear as well as our hazard lights as well now Volvo obviously being a Scandinavian company the controls like this are important and they are left as buttons so you can use them with gloves makes total sense but um a lot of companies fail to see that now this is Volvo's new gas system or Android, basically it's based, it's Google, um, you can download apps, you've got all sorts of bit. We've been through this before, so I won't go too mad, but you can see here, everything is excellent. Um, no lag on that at all. We're running Google Maps. Really, really nice. Air conditioning controls, again, are in the screen. Can be a little bit annoying if you're not used to it, but once you get used to it, it's fine. We've also got heated seats and heated steering wheel in this car as well, which is a rather nice addition. Moving on to the steering wheel, we've got our cruise control buttons here. We've got the adjustment for the adaptive cruise control. Other side, we've got our voice recognition for Hey Google and the, oh, there we go. Cancel. There we go. Um, and our control buttons as well. This switches through the displays on the digital dashboard as well. Moving on behind the wheel, we have our stalks and there's this typical CMA Volvo wiper stalk as well as indicator stalk as well. Obviously we've got automatic lights, etc. Now, like I said, we've got the Harman Kardon system, which really is a lovely system. Um, I'll talk about it later in the video, sort of how it deals with road noise, but it's got noise canceling. Um, it's got lovely, lovely bass and sort of high notes as well. It really is a nicely balanced system and worth the extra money, I think. And just this, the chrome trim just finishes the car off lovely, doesn't it, in that corner. Now, interesting design. We've got a slight overlap of the dashboard. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Mr. DL referred to it as a duck beak. Um, and I can sort of see what she means. It sort of protrudes. Um, but it's a nice little feature, nice and sh nice sharp crease as well which is excellent. Now, 
Moving up, we've got our lovely frameless mirror with a nice view out the back. Um, despite this being an estate car, there's a lot of visibility, which is nice. Up here, we've got LED lighting, touch lighting, so it's not even a button, you just touch it and it comes on, which is nice. Same for that one, or if you want more lighting, you just press that, which is again a capacitive touch button. We've also got Volvo Assistant and SOS, and obviously this car will call the emergency services if you're involved in an accident. Two microphones up here as well um, for Bluetooth Mobile. We've got vanity mirror on the passenger side and also vanity mirror on the driver's side as well. Now this car also does come with the brilliant Volvo parking ticket clip, as you can see we've utilised it here. and. And we also have our boot button where we can open and close the boot. So the boot's currently open. We'll press it and it should close. There we go. You've got to press and hold it. You hear it whirs its way down like so. Um, and that pretty much concludes the front. Obviously, we've got a nice little touch on the seat belts here since 1959. Volvo made it patent free um, for seat belts to save lives. And we've got a bit of storage in here as well with a USB-C for Apple CarPlay and um, oh, two USB-Cs for Apple CarPlay. Fortunately, no Android Auto available um, on this particular car. But let's take a look at the back. Because those of you with children, etc., are going to really want to know what this car's like. And it's pretty cavernous. I mean, this is this seat is in my normal driving position now. I'm six foot two and there is plenty of space. Quite tight on sort of foot under seat space, but it is absolutely fine actually in the back here. Um, lovely view through to the front. Nice and airy cabin with the light headlining. It really does make a difference. Good door nets, or sort of seat nets on the back of the seats here. Um, you can fit sort of the road atlas and that sort of thing in. Not massive amounts of storage, but enough really. Got charging USB ports down here. I like how Volvo have replaced it, replaced the 12 volt socket with USB sockets. It just makes more sense in my opinion. We've got climate control in the back here. We've also got seat heating in the rear, which is rather nice. Um, and also air con. So it's, yeah, it's a quad zone air conditioning. All capacitive touch, which is quite nice. View out the back again. Lovely. These cars have a lot of glass in them, um, which is really, really nice. We've also got a inbuilt sunshade here, which hooks up there. Um, so that's nice. Um, if you've got young children, don't want them being cooked in the sun, which I'm sure most of us don't really want to be, um, then that's a nice feature. Nice piece of trim here. Nice aluminium door handle. And we've also got extra vintage here as well, which is good. And in the back, I wouldn't mind spending hours in this car. You can see you've got a lovely view throughout the front. Um, some of these cars you can, or some estate cars, you can either be sat and you're staring at the top of the roof, um, or you can sit really low down and you don't get much of a view out. Whereas this, you've got a nice commanding view to sort of stop travel sickness. Same out the windows as well. Also got small door bins here. Um, sort of enough for a fruit shoot bottle or something like that and a slightly bigger one in the front but not overly massive and then of course we have been through the boot but i'll just show you the fact you can open it on the key um, as well as with your foot or just with the handle um, if you're that way inclined and like i said loads and loads of space in the back here now we've got two buttons at the top here you can either just close the boot or you can close the boot and lock the car which is quite a handy one if you're leaving you just press that and the whole car's locked you don't have to worry about it also got a grab handle here on the off chance that it stopped working and a removable panel here which i assume will hold the warning triangle let's see if i can get it to release yeah there you go there's your warning triangle there um which is nice and they're just done on these two tabs there so um as you can see it's a very very lovely spacious car but let's see what it's like on the road does it really live up to volvo standards of comfort um we've got rather large wide tires um how will it cope with road noise etc let's take a look and see we'll close the boot off of our key here just like that and it closes with a nice thud Okay then, so 
here we are out on our A road test and instantly the V90 feels very capable. This V5 powertrain does scoot you along the road very quickly to uh, turn off here. And although it's a large car, it doesn't feel it on the road. Um, you can see these are quite narrow, these are actually B roads to be honest, but it's you feel confident to be able to take it through bends quite nicely.
seats are lovely and comfortable. Um, the gearbox gets you up to the, the sort of the highest gear pretty quickly. Um, and you can see here we're cruising at just over 1500 RPM at 65 miles an hour. Um, got plenty of good visibility out as well. Got nice big windows, although the sort of the belt line of the car is quite high, you've still got quite a nice view around. Um, obviously a lovely view out the windscreen as well. And you can see here that the car's just tracks dead straight, minimal pressure required on the steering wheel. Um, and this is really what this car is going to excel at, covering big distances um, in sort of a relatively short amount of time. Um, our trip that we did to the Arctic Circle, this would be fantastic at it, because you could just get in it and just drive. Um, and you could quite happily sit here, almost until the fuel tank just runs out, it'll just keep going, um, with no issues at all. And you'll probably wake up, or wake up, you'll probably arrive at your destination, um, more relaxed than when you left for it so it's uh, yeah a lovely place to be now over bumps and stuff and change the surfaces in the road uh, it's definitely better than say a v60 that's just the long wheelbase um, there's less sort of well, the, the movement is over a longer period of time which means it smooths it out uh, and the suspension as well is nice and supple um, it's not too firm on the side as I expect which is good too big this car you forget about its size and I think that's the mark of a good K2 
car is the fact that it's it's comfortable and you feel comfortable in it. Obviously, I drive the S80 on the daily basis, so which is nearly five meters long, similar length to this, but this feels a much nicer car to drive through um, small places. There we go. We're just going to abuse. Okay. <laughs> so we don't get constantly get interrupted by Google. And what's nice is you get the, the town speed limit to come up um, to the car. You can see here, we, we're actually by a school, and it's telling us we're by a school. You've got to watch out for children. All these little simple things that are synonymous, synonymous with safety, um, Volvo includes. And you can tell that they're sort of leading the way in actually influencing your driving to be safer. You've got the front camera coming here. It's just a, just a nice really really handy you can see I've got my lines in, in front of the, the car as well on the camera which is good and if you show what we're what, it looks actually like we've got quite a bit of distance there actually on out the windscreen we're closer than it appears but it's just handy you could imagine as you're pulling up to a bollard in a parking in a car park for example um, that'd be really handy Also, if it's sort of from a standstill and cover to a stop in traffic like this, very, very smooth indeed. Um, you don't really notice the mild hybrid system working at all. It doesn't feel any different to a, a standard car. Um, we've got sort of auto start stop when you come to a stop to save fuel, and then it'll sort of propel itself with the electric motors. Well, I did. The, the mild hybrid setup is an electric motor that powers the engine. Um, or is in, in the engine, um, so it's not directly driving the wheels, but it's you can just sense it's there and makes everything slightly smoother, which is nice. You see here now we're going to come into a 20 zone. We can set our cruise control down to 20. Like that. And now we're set at 20 and it'll just cruise along. Now the speed limits aren't always perfect, you can see they're saying 30 still, but um, Wales have introduced a lot of new 20 mile an hour speed limits recently, so it just be a case of it catching up really. You can, you can, you can hear the revs changing, but you can't even feel the gearbox, it's, it's fantastic. And then, as we come out of this 30, Put our foot down into the 60. Not that you never need to do this, but you get a lovely um, surge of torque straight away. It sounds quite fruity too. So let's take you back now. Um, we'll find somewhere quiet to pull over and give you our final thoughts on the car, wrap it up, and um, tell you whether I think the V90. Is a worthy, uh, a worthy successor to the, the V70. Okay, then. So here we are back at Keith Price Volvo, and I thought we'd just give you some final thoughts on the V90. Now, they spent the day with this car; it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, it is an exceptionally capable car. It picks up from where the V70 left off, um, modernises it, does everything a little bit better, and I think it will be a test of time to see whether it's as robust as V70s are famous for being, but as a place to be, this car really is gorgeous. It looks fantastic. Um, people are going to notice it straight away. It's a lovely looking car. I love it. As you look around the car up here, the, the Scandinavian sort of styling that's the Volvo using now is just fantastic. There aren't many cars that look like this on the road. That's what I like. Your LDs, BMWs, Mercedes, etc. all sort of blend in, uh, sort of blend in I'll just blend in in general really whereas the volvos really stand out and if we come closer there's little details that are just nice like thor's hammer led headlights are fantastic they work exceptionally well um we've got massive brakes vented as well um everything is just heavy duty but well done very subtle over bumps Oh, you don't get any jittering chassis or anything it's just a really really excellent car and it really for a family i don't think you'd need any other extra car i don't think you'd need an xc90 unless you, unless you lived off road for example this would do everything an xc90 would and more 
Um, it really is excellent. I just love the fact that you can open the boot off the key. <laughs> <laughs> I've never needed to do it, but I've always wanted to do it. That's that's the thing. So um, this mild hybrid version, I've averaged around 39 mpg. Um, on a run, I'm sure you could get 45, 50. Um, I've been, had some fun down some A roads, so it hasn't been sort of an ideal test for economy. The combined figure is 39.7 mpg, so we're around where it should be for mixed driving. Um, the mild hybrid system does make it quite efficient. Um, it's obviously a big, heavy, long car, so you're not going to get the best fuel economy from it. Um, but there's certain features built in, so it will coast if you let off down a hill, for example, turn off the engine completely, and little things like that really do. You can tell the Volvo are going for efficiency. With it. So, um, yeah. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you looking to get one um, or are you just interested? Let me know your thoughts in these sort of larger Volvos in general. Obviously, my S80 is parked over there. I drive a saloon car, but this this would be lovely. I can imagine the S90, if it's got all the same characteristics as this car, would be fantastic as well. So let's see if we can keep the price of everybody any of those to stop. But they're quite rare cars now. So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you next video. Cheers.